Hi, it's Rachel from A Mother Far From Home here, language of listening coach, certified baby toddler sleep consultant, mother of five. And today I wanna to talk about something that I think everybody struggles with, and that is transitions. I did a survey a couple of weeks ago where I wrote and I asked, what is the most annoying part of your family life? What is something that seems to just go wrong or do your head in? And I got hundreds and hundreds, maybe I don't even, maybe thousands, I don't even know, of responses, so many. And one of the things that kept flagging over and over and over and over again were transitions. So I just wanted to give some simple tips and some ways to minimize the stress that comes with transitions in our daily life today. When we say transition, we think, you know, the general, feeling that we have is when our kids are gonna go from one thing to the next thing. We think they can really struggle to stop doing something and start doing something else. And while that can be true, what's more accurate is they don't wanna stop doing something they like in order to do something they like a little bit less. So kids don't have a problem if you're like, you know, we're gonna stop homework and we're gonna like go eat chips and salts at the restaurant, you know? They're like, score! You're not having transition problems here. Or if you're like, we're gonna be done having chores and we're gonna go swimming. The kids aren't like, no! That doesn't happen. They like to do things that they like. So I think if we can shift when we think transitions, it means we're gonna get them to stop doing something they don't wanna stop doing in order to do something else. Now, of course, there's some personalities. One of my kids is, uh, you know, has some special needs and he struggles more than the other kids with transitions. This is true. But it's still, he doesn't struggle stopping something he doesn't like to do something he likes. Oh no, he doesn't, and your kids probably don't either. This little mental shift will help. Okay, yes, it's a transition. This is something we're gonna stop this and go to something else, but the main reason that we get so worked up and that it's difficult is because kids don't like stopping things that they like, and we don't either as adults. My first tip of how to navigate transitions well without all the meltdowns, yours or your kids, because this is true, what can often happen is they resist a little, and especially if you're in public, you're much more triggered and it can just go straight down the pot. So the first thing is to mentally prepare yourself. So for example, if you're out somewhere with the kids and they're having a good time and you know you're gonna have to say, we have to go home soon or we're gonna have to stop this, is to get yourself kind of like your heartbeat at a normal rate. Because if your heartbeat's already, you're like beating fast, you know, you're like, I'm gonna have to tell these kids to come away from the park even though they've just made like 19 best friends to tell them that we have to go home and go to bed. So your heart's like this. <sighs> and you're like waiting for every little bit of resistance, okay? You're super stressed now. So you're bringing this like stressed energy and then even a little bit of resistance, you know, we're gonna lose our cool. We lose our cool so much more when we don't go into it, just kind of, you know, straight out, deadpan, this is what we're doing, kids. So before you get ready to do it, even if you're just at home, like this sounds all like so dramatic, but you know what's dramatic? gnashing of teeth, okay, at, and flailing and screaming and all this type of extreme resistance that then becomes like a big power battle. Do you wanna get in the mindset? I'm the parent, I'm the boss here. These kids are gonna do it, it's gonna be fine, I can handle it, I'm not gonna be in fight or flight before I even tell them, okay? And that'll help you handle any resulting unhappiness better. The second way to handle transitions and to get your kids to kind of do what you're saying is to make sure and give a warning, but don't repeat yourself a million times. My son who has some special needs, I need to repeat myself a lot for him to keep it right in front of his face, okay? But my other four kids, they can hear. And if I repeat, 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 what happens is instead of them being more and more firm in what's gonna happen, they tune me out. You wanna say five minutes warning whatever the case may be if it's a bigger thing it, it doesn't matter you know 30 minute warning, whatever it is you want to just say okay start to wind down mentally that we're going start to wind down mentally that we are finishing this but don't repeat yourself too many times okay and don't be confused like say it loud acknowledge that they heard you okay this is for you because if you if like I didn't hear you I'm not ready I need five more and then you start to have this feeling you're like did I? Did they not? Did they not have any warning? It's so bad of me if I don't give them warning. Am I damaging them if I don't get them warning? I'm taking them away from something really fun. I'm gonna scar them for- No, no. See, when we're not confident, we open ourselves up to all kinds of manipulation. We lose our confidence and it makes us insecure and it makes us open to be tossed to and fro by whatever they react. So we say five minutes and we're going. They hear us at five minutes. 
okay, we're leaving. And then they throw down and they're like, I don't want to, I don't want to. And then it's like, I didn't give enough warnings. No, they just didn't want to. So, okay, we're gonna go. So you're gonna give the warning. You're gonna be sure they heard it, get a verbal acknowledgement, depending on their age, however that might look. And then when it's time, stick to it, okay? This is what I like to call, actually, I think it's Sandy Blacker calls it this exact term in our language of listening training. Whenever we say something, we say we're leaving in five minutes and then five minutes comes and then they don't like it. So we're like, okay. We'll give you five more. What happens is you actually resent this. So now you're annoyed at the kids. You're like, oh, I gave you five more minutes. At the end of five more minutes, are you gonna want five more? The reason we're feeling resentful of this is because we made a reasonable request. We gotta go home. I gotta cook dinner. We gotta eat. We're leaving in five minutes. And then we stretched our boundary. The boundary was five minutes. We're leaving. And then we stretched it. We're like, okay, what's five more minutes? And then you give a kid an inch. They take three miles. And then it's like 30 minutes later and you're mad. And then you're mad at them, right? We can avoid all of this like weird ickiness by just saying, we're gonna do what we say we're gonna do. We're not gonna stretch that boundary because when we stretch boundaries, kids learn. We don't mean what we say. They learn if they woodpeck us to death, we'll give in. Oh, you know the woodpecker trick. Aunt, please, buy, please, please, please. Until you're literally like pecked to death. Oh, you didn't know that one? Maybe I'm the only one with woodpeckers. We also become demoralized when we give in. When we quote, give in. What I mean to say is when we stretch a perfectly reasonable boundary, okay? Another example of this is, I feel like I'm off topic. Am I off topic? Don't I always? This is good. Say for example, you're cooking dinner and dinner's gonna be ready in 30 minutes and they're like, I need a snack, I really need a snack, I'm so hungry. And so in your mind, inside you're like, I don't wanna give them a snack, they can wait 30 minutes, seeing as how they had a snack two and a half hours ago, they've never gone a day without ample amounts of food, they're fine. If I give them a snack, they won't eat dinner. These are all the things that you're thinking, but then, you're not so confident in yourselves. We moms are not, we are insecure moms in this generation. I got a whole book coming out that goes a lot into this in the fall, on my birthday actually. We're not very confident, okay? And so, it, because of we're hearing so much from everywhere, we're not trusting our instincts, whatever. We think, I, they're gonna be hungry, they're so hungry. They tug on our heartstrings. We're using their emotions as a barometer. They're not happy. They gotta have a snack. <laughs> and then we give them a snack and then we're annoyed. We're resentful. The kid couldn't wait 30 minutes. They couldn't. And then what happens? Dinner comes. She's like a, not feeling it. This is an example of a boundary stretch. We just say it and we let it be. If they don't like it, they're gonna have some emotions. They're gonna learn to handle those. Learning to handle frustration is a huge life skill. It's huge. If you can't handle frustration, you're gonna have a real hard time in adulthood, okay? So this, you just keep in your boundary. We're leaving in five minutes. This is when we're going. The third way to do your best to ensure, look, sometimes um, transition is just gonna be a total hot mess, okay? This is another good way to ensure that they go more your way, is to have some rules or built-in consequences to where if the kids just won't stop and do what you say. So for example, it might be when you're turning off the TV or if you're letting them have screen time or if they're playing a game or if they're at their friend's house or you're at the park or you're in public somewhere doing something fun and they refuse to come. You say, come with me, it's time to leave. And if the kids file up and come and they're a little sad, they're hurt, they didn't want to, they're pouting, that's not what I'm talking about because they're just having their emotions there, but they did what you said. I'm talking about if they throw down, if they run from you, if they won't come, if they're like, no, this type of behavior, okay? You wanna have some rules around this. So for example, if you can't turn the screen off, the tablet off, whatever it is, you knew you had 30 minutes, I gave you a five minute warning. If at the end of that you throw down, you don't get it tomorrow or for a whole week or whatever it is. You just make a rule, make it when they're not even playing. Now you've come up with a rule. Here's the rule, kids. This will help them. So I know some moms are like, rules are just like so restrictive. But I wanna tell you something. Rules set us up for success. Imagine if the mortgage companies were just like, pay us when you get around to it, okay? And you're like, out of the goodness of my heart, I'm gonna pay every month. And then one month comes and you're like, I don't have a stamp. <laughs> as if we pay by mail. One month, you're just like not feeling it. Budget's a little tight, had some health bills. You know, I feel like they'll be fine. I'll pay it next month. We don't do that, why? Because we don't want to lose the house, okay? So rules keep us making good decisions. The decisions we want to make. We don't want to default on a house loan, right? These things keep us honest, okay? All the limits that we have in nature, you know, you look at the gas gauge. Y'all know about that time me running out of gas by school, me and the kids are walking in the ditch. 
I was trying to save three dollars. But anyway, you see the gas going down and you think, I've got to fill up. I see it going down. If it doesn't fill up, I'm going to run out of gas. This is what happens, so I'm going to fill up. This is the type of thing that happens when we make rules that are good for our kids, okay? It's actually not good if every time they have to stop what they're doing, they like totally flail out and have a complete meltdown. They're doing it so that you will give them what they want, okay? And if you consistently give in to this, you're just teaching them that the more resistance they give, the more you'll just do what they want, but they don't necessarily know what's good for them as children. They know what they feel, they know what they want, they know what they like, they know what they don't like, but they don't have the overarching sense of the grand picture of life, okay? So you wanna put some rules down, or if it's the park, it's like, if you can't leave the park when I say, we're not going tomorrow the next time. So this is a more natural way instead of like drop and give me 20, you know, not like some random consequence. It's like if, it, or TV time, you know, I have to say this with my son who's particularly struggles. When I've given you a warning, if I can't turn the TV off without you yelling, then the next time you don't get to watch it and that's it. And they'll remember that it'll stick in their mind and it'll help them to access their motivation. It's good. The fourth and last way that we're going to help kids transition well during the day is to give a proper order. I am always going on and on about this. This is so important. So you don't want to have super fun outdoor time and then chore time. You want to have them to do the chores first so that they can go through them with knowing that they're going to get to go outside and play after. You don't want them to have playing at their friend's house time and then coming home and doing homework because you know what they're never going to want to do? Leave the friend's house to do homework. So you want to order things in a way that actually makes good sense. If you want them to tidy their rooms, have them tidy before lunch, have them tidy before screen time, have them tidy before outdoor time. You see what I mean? Order it to where they're doing the thing they don't really want to do and then they're happy to transition from that to the thing that they do want to do. Order is so important. This is part of my series on simplifying family life and making family life more peaceful for you. So I hope you'll check out all of the other videos in the playlist below and I'll talk to you later.